So we're still using the same principles of u substitution that we just used, except we're going to apply it to definite integrals. So let's say, for example, we want to evaluate this definite integral from 0 to 1 of x times x squared plus 1 cubed dx. So looking at it, technically this is a polynomial. We could multiply everything out and then just apply our power rule. But we're going to have to cube x squared plus 1. I do not want to have to do that. So let's just tackle it using u substitution. So our u is x squared plus 1. How do I decide that? Well, it's mostly because that's what's being raised to the power. And if I take the derivative of this, I'm going to get 2x. Now, I have x here in my problem. I don't have 2x. So that means that 2 has got to move to the other side. So that's 1 half. And my, x, or my dx needs to be on the same side as my x. So x dx right here is going to be replaced with one half du. I'm going to go ahead and do that <coughs> to help myself out. All right. Uh, now, principles of u substitution say I have to replace everything. Okay, so here's my integral. Um, x squared plus 1 is my u, so that's u cubed. The only thing I have not replaced up to this point are my limits of integration. So here's what we have to do. We need to replace our lower limit we're going to use our u to figure out what the new lower limit should be. So, our new lower limit is u equals, we plug in the number that it is for x. So, 0 squared plus 1. So, 0 squared plus 1 is 1. So, my new lower limit is 1. My upper limit, I'm using my u. I plug in the current limit for x. So, 1 squared plus 1 is 2. So my new upper limit is 2. Now, the reason why I want to change these limits is because if I do this, I don't have to plug my u back in after I integrate. And I've seen problems where they don't ask you to do the entire process. They ask you what integral is equivalent to this given integral. And this is what they're asking you. They do a u substitution, and you've got to recognize which one is the correct u substitution. All right, so that one half stays in front. Let's integrate. Uh, u cubed is u to the fourth uh, over four, but I'm just going to put that one fourth in front. u to the fourth, and I'm going to put that one fourth right here. We're integrating from one to two. So we have one eighth times two to the fourth minus one to the fourth. So that's one eighth times two to the fourth is uh, 16. Minus 1. So this answer is 15 over 8. Notice, after I integrated, I did not plug x squared plus 1 back into my problem because I changed my limits according to my u. As long as you change the limits according to your, your u, you do not have to substitute that expression back in right here before you evaluate the um, interval. It just saves you an extra step, okay? You should get the same answer. If you kept your limits as 0 and 1, and you plug x squared, back, x squared plus 1 back into the problem, you're going to get the same thing. You're just building that work in there. And again, I'm showing you that because there are problems that just ask you to recognize a u substitution, and you've got to recognize when they change the limits like that. Okay? Let's do one that looks kind of like what, uh, one that we did earlier today. We're going to evaluate from 1 to 5 the integral of x over the square root of 2x minus 1 dx. So, my u is the expression under the integral, 2x, or not under the integral, under the radical, 2x plus 1. So, du over dx is 2. I do not have a 2 in my problem, so that has to move to the other side. 1 half du is equal to dx. So I've got something to substitute for that. This is my u. I don't have anything to substitute for my x. So what we learned earlier, we're going to solve that for x. Add 1, divide by 2, which is 1 half. 
So now we have something to substitute for our x. 1 half times u plus 1. And I got to substitute for my limits. So my new lower limit, I plug in 1 into my u. So 2 times 1 minus 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Minus 1 is 1. My new lower limit is 1. Uh, so it's actually the same. That happens sometimes. My new upper limit 2 times 5 minus 1, 10 minus 1 is 9. That one changed. Sometimes they won't change. Most of the time they do, but every once in a while they don't. And here's an example of when it did. Alright, so let's make all of our substitutions. My limits are now 1 and 9. My x up there is 1 half. I'm going to put that 1 half in front. u plus 1. I got a square root in the denominator, so that's u to the negative one half, and dx gets replaced with uh, one half du. So I have two one halves in the front. I have two one halves in the front. Don't lose either one of those. One of them came from my substitution for x. One of them came from the substitution for dx. Let's keep on trucking. 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth. I got to distribute the u to the negative first, so that becomes u to the 1 half plus u to the negative 1 half. Let's integrate. Add 1 to the exponent, u to the 3 halves, divide by the new exponent, so that becomes multiplying by 2 thirds. Add 1 to my exponent, that becomes 1 to the 1 half, u to the 1 half. Divide by 1 half, that becomes multiplying by 2. I'm going to evaluate from 1 to 9. Again, I don't have to plug my u back in because I changed my limits. So this is actually a lot shorter than what we did earlier today because we do not have to worry about all that factoring. We just got to crunch the numbers at this point. And honestly, to help me with crunching the numbers, I am going to factor out a 2, though. Just to make my life a little bit easier, I'm going to factor out a 2. So now I've got 1 third times 9 to the 3 halves plus 9 to the 1 half minus 1 third times 1 to the 3 halves plus 1 to the 1 half. One-fourth times two is one-half. All right, exponents come before multiplication. So, nine to the three-halves. The square root of nine is three. Three cubed is 27. So that's one-third times 27, which is nine. Nine to the one-half is the square root of nine, which is three. One to any power is still one, so I'm subtracting one-third plus one. So we've got one half of 12 minus one third plus one is one third plus three thirds, that's four thirds. Mm, I'm gonna go ahead and distribute the one half. It really doesn't matter which order you do it in. One half of 12 is six. One half times four thirds, four over two gives me two thirds. So that's 18 thirds minus two-thirds, which is sixteen-thirds. Ta-da! And that's doing it, obviously, without a calculator completely, which, if we were to ask you one of these, would be without a calculator, because otherwise you could just type it into that TI-89, and it would do it for you. Okay? So, here